Hey everyone, um, today I'm going to be talking about, once again, the critical question number one, how are sports injuries classified and managed? This is part two of the part four series. So today we'll be looking into soft tissue injuries, tears, spray, sprains, contusions, skin abrasions, lacerations, blisters, as well as the inflammatory response. And additionally, we'll be having a more detailed look into managing these soft tissue injuries, including the RICER approach, which is the rest, ice, compression, elevation, and referral, as well as the immediate treatment of skin injuries. So I'd like to start off with defining a few things. What is a tear? So a tear is when soft tissue injuries are stretched excessively or se severed due to excessive forces. So you can just imagine if you are working really hard or suppose you just have like a, a bit of problems in the way you move um, or just come across an accident, your body can uh, have these soft tissue injuries which can end up leading to you know other problems and other bigger problems. So most injuries that you see around like you know oh yeah sprained ankle and all that, that's that's referring to these soft tissue injuries. So there's, there's two types of tears, and the two types of tears are sprains and there are strains. So first off, I'll, I'll tell you what a sprain is. A sprain is basically a torn ligament fiber. It happens when the joint capsule and its surrounding ligaments, ligaments have been stretched beyond their natural range of motion. So just imagine if uh, something was stretched more than it should have been, and then that led to a torn ligament fiber. That is what a sprain is. Okay, so then you might ask, what is a strain? So strain is when muscle fibers or connecting tendons are torn. This isn't exactly the same as a sprain, and it, a, a strain is very similar, but um, in a strain it is when muscle fibers or connecting tendons are torn, whereas in a sprain it's the joint capsule and its surrounding ligaments which have been stretched beyond their natural range of motion, leading to a torn ligament fiber. So um, that, that's the main difference. And the other thing I'd like to mention that sprains have a, a system of grading. There's grade 1, which is like the lowest grade, there's grade 2, which is a partial tear, and then finally there's a grade 3, which is the most severe tear. So you can just say, you know, um, full rupture. And grade 1 is like uh, <laughs> just a very small tear, so not much. Um, okay, so we'll move on now, as I've explained the three main things. Uh, I'll tell you about a contusion. Now, before I even start defining a contusion, I think it's easier for you guys to know what a contusion is also referred to in everyday life. We pretty much contusions are bruises. Now, if you just think about how bruises occur, bruises kind of occur through direct forces which are struck onto our body. So for an example, if I had a cricket ball, like once again, I used that example straight again in my last video, if I have a cricket ball and it hit me at a fast speed, there's a, there's a good chance that a contusion is going to actually occur on the, where the skin is, or there will be a contusion. Now a contusion, a contusion, the actual direct definition is that when a direct force is struck onto soft tissue, and this may lead to internal bleeding, and it's also known as a bruise. So that's pretty much what a contusion is. If you just want another example to try and help you remember, think about paintball. In paintball, you have the little paintballs coming out of the gun, and they're actually direct forces, very, very fast, and they hit your body. And um, if they do hit your bare skin, or just if you didn't have enough protection, chances are is that you're going to get a contusion a contusion being a bruise. Okay, so now we'll move on to a few other things that I'm going to complete on the spot. So this is uh, really, really simple, and if you just know these words just generally, it should be fine. An abrasion, let's have a think of it. So um, abrasion is used in a, in a lot of contexts, but in this context we're thinking of it in about, suppose, um, suppose you're running, and suppose, suppose when you run, you slip over and you fall down onto the girt, dirt or gravel. Now, when this happens, and suppose you, you scraped your arms, that is pretty much an abrasion. If you have a look at your, your arms or your hands or palms or whatever after you fell down onto the gravel or dirt, and if they have been scraped along this gravel or dirt, if you have a look at your arms, you can say that, see that they're all grazed and, you know, all like, um, uh, yeah, just something which is grazed and, um, it's kind of scratched even. That's what an abrasion is. So I'll, I'll talk, I'll, I'll just simply write grazes. So then we have a laceration. 
Now, if you think about a laceration, you want to try and associate that with a knife in your mind, because that's the easiest way of kind of remembering it. Think of a laceration as a cut. So if you have a cut inside your skin, which is, uh, you know, uh, not that deep, but still have a cut, which is like medium deep, that's pretty much a laceration. So you can imagine, suppose if there was a sharp stick, or even if there was roses. And um, in this sense, I'll give you an example. Uh, if I were to pick out roses, and I didn't end up using the right equipment, or I didn't actually clip it off directly, and I went to use my hands, if I touch one of the thorns, and one of the thorns actually cut through my arm, or hands, or whatever it was, then that will most likely mean that I have a laceration on wherever that thing cut through. Um, it's also a soft tissue injury, and it's just something that happens you know, all the time, obviously. So we'll just refer to that as a cut. Remember, you don't need to actually know these three things in extreme crucial detail, except for just, uh, just a simple thing in your head which helps you remind the general concept. In the test, or in any test that you get, you might want to expand on it. But in this case, it's just important that you know the main concept, and you can understand what I'm trying to tell you. So a blister, on the other hand, is um, not actually like an abrasion or a laceration, obviously. And um, you can just think of it this way. Uh, have you guys ever had a blister on, on your heels or near your heels, uh, across, across or on top of your heels? Well, there, there might be a good reason to that. So suppose you are, are walking. And suppose there's a lot of friction occur occurring on the top part of the heel, or like on, on top of the heel, just below the, the leg itself. But um, it, you, I think you guys might know what I'm talking about, the arc, arc and arc place of the heel. So if you guys were walking and suppose fluid got caught up there and a lot of friction happened, then chances are that you might as well have a blister there after it starts hurting. Because what a blister is, is when fluid is caught up and it is uh, when friction is extreme friction is ex applied at one location where fluid is present therefore causing a blister you might have heard a lot of people talking about uh, stuff like oh yeah I popped a blister and whatnot when they're saying they've popped a blister it basically refers to actually getting rid of the fluid inside that little bubble that has formed which is the blister itself so a blister I'll just say is um, continual friction plus fluid equals blister. So um, that's that's basically what a blister is. If you guys don't really know what these are, I recommend you just search them up on Google Images and have a look at the general image of them so it can even help you remember a little easier. So um, if you get a question on blisters, make sure you uh, talk about friction and fluid because those are the two main things required for a blister to occur. And um, now I'll move on to the inflammatory response. If I'm going a little too quick, feel free to just pause the video and have a, have a quick look at what I've written so far. Anyway, so an inflammatory response is after the soft tissue injury, um, the body responds by increasing the fluid around the local area and joint. So a good way for me to actually explain the inflammatory response is just to ask you as when you guys were a kid, kid when you guys were kids. So if you guys fell down and suppose you had a scab, um, that scab, when, when the whole regeneration process of your skin, and just in the beginning, initially, how it's, you know, it's bleeding out and whatnot, that's pretty much the inflammatory response, which is, you know, trying to get to that area as quick as it can, trying to fix it up, trying to, trying its best to reverse its effect in this type of situation. So what I'm trying to say here is that after a soft tissue injury, the body responds, responds by increasing the fluid around the local area and joint. Um, and this, overall, reduces range of motion while increasing the sense of pain. And uh, lastly, these inflammatory responses last for up to five days. So uh, it's, it's not that bad, it's just that when your, your body's natural reaction to any soft tissue injury is most likely going to be an inflammatory response. That's pretty much all you need to really take away from this. Okay, so now we're going to hit the big question. So the big question of the syllabus is actually talking about RISA. RISA is a, a management for soft tissue injuries, and it's something that you guys should really remember, because it comes up a lot, and it can be asked in massive, massive verbs, which require you to write essays. Uh, and these essays might have to be uh, in quite detail. So my actual table that I'm going to provide today is going to have quite a lot of detail, but I'm going to go through it really quickly with my own words and, and very summarized version. But feel free to pause the video and actually just have a deeper look into it. Please don't get overwhelmed from the information. The only reason why there's such information here, so much information, is so that it's it's a resource that 
is going to be really helpful for you guys because I, I made this table for my, by myself and I made it for my summaries and obviously this table has uh, probably does have too much information just pick out whatever you guys think is relevant but I'll be talking about whatever is relevant right now anyways so I'll start off with the first letter or actually I'll just describe Ricer itself Ricer is a technique well known for the management of soft tissue injuries. So, as I said before, we're managing soft tissue injuries. We need some sort of approach, and therefore we look at the Ricer approach. And these um, soft tissue injuries, they can be defined as any injury made to the body. So it can be to the skin, to the muscle, to tendon, and ligament. As well as, start, well, for specific examples, sprained ankles, contusions, torn hamstrings, stuff like that. And basically, this Ricer approach is for anything like that. It's for anything which is a soft tissue injury. So uh, if you can actually pick up, I've used the alarm approach in uh, doing my table. So no matter what ver verb it is, all the way up to examine, you should be able to answer it using this information. That's why it's so detailed. Okay, so the first part is, what does the actual R stand for in Ricer? You have to remember that the entire Ricer is an acronym. And this acronym will be explained right now. So the R, it stands for something called, uh, it, it stands for the, for rest. Because as soon as a soft tissue injury occurs, you want to rest the soft tissue injury. And this resting is a process of which the injured area seizes movement. And by seizing this movement, what's actually happening is that we, we can reduce the amount of bleeding, and we can even, you know, uh, somehow reduce, not somehow, but in a partial sense, we can reduce the pain as well. So the R is for rest. And uh, I've explained here into more detail, and I've also examined in more detail. I just, you guys can just take a look at this table and just read from it. I really do hope that you read this table because it's very important. But I'll just be basically looking at the name and define as well as describe for this video. So the next thing is the I. What does the I stand for? So the I stands for ice. What actually happens in the Reister approach is that first, after you rest, you apply ice. There are a few reasons why we actually apply ice. One of the main reasons is because we want to reduce the amount of pain that they're feeling. And the other reason is also so we can reduce the blood flow to the area. We can reduce swelling as well as spasm. And, you know, you can just help that area, you know, uh, try and st store that area in a, in a nice way so that it doesn't cause more damage to the person. Uh, if, by applying ice, you have to make sure that you don't just straight off apply ice to the area because that can be quite dangerous. There are such things as ice burns. What you actually want to do is you want to get the ice, you want to wrap it up in a towel or in a, in a plastic bag, then into a towel, and then you want to apply it gently to the area, making sure that it you know, has some time periods for cool off, cool on, cool off, cool on. Therefore, by doing that, it's just safer. Okay, so the C inside RISA stands for compression. Now, you might think, what the hell is compression? But compression is actually really simple. If you remember doing first aid at all in uh, the prelim uh, PDHP topic, or just first aid generally, you might realize that if someone has a broken arm, or if someone has anything, we, we usually compress it. Now, the main reason why we compress it is so that uh, the, uh, the amount of swelling and the amount of excessive bleeding from that area can decrease. And that's basically what we want. We don't want that area to bleed a lot. We don't want it to swell a lot. We want to try and decrease that as much as we can. And therefore, we compress it. So just applying pressure to that area. Uh, and that can be done through you know, an elastic bandage or whatever you can possibly find, which is nice, safe, and easy to use. Uh, just use it for compression. And therefore, that area will have a reduced blood flow, reduced pain, and whatnot. Now, additionally, we talk about the elevation. So the E inside RISA is called is for elevation. Now, elevation is pretty simple as well. So suppose I had a soft tissue injury in um, my leg. Suppose it was in my leg, and suppose I had all my blood going down to my leg, trying to, you know, the inflammatory response and whatnot. If someone actually lifted up my leg, then the blood wouldn't actually <laughs> that easily go to the leg. And um, by actually doing that, by actually raising my leg over my heart, or like above my heart, um, we're actually giving uh, more, like the, the blood is actually not going to it as much, as well as it reduces swelling, it reduces throbbing, and by doing this, it's just a lot more, um, it's a lot quicker than just letting it all bleed out. It really does help because a lot of blood will just return or just won't actually go to the area, making it bleed a little less and also swell a little less as well. 
And lastly, we'll go to R. Now, R is the simplest part of RISA, and that's just for referral. So in referral, what we're actually doing is that <laughs> it's very simple. You can just base it off the, the word itself, referral. What are we doing? We're referring to a professional. That's what we need to know. We're referring to someone who can professionally diagnose the issue, professionally look at the issue, issue and professionally have a way to um, you know, uh, also help in the treatment of this issue. So um, whatever injury that happens, whatever, whatever problem that occurs on the field or whatever, it must be checked uh, professionally by either a doctor, a physiotherapist, or whoever is relevant for the situation. And by that, we're just ensuring that even though soft tissue injuries occurred, even though we've done all these steps, we're just assuring that the, the, there's nothing further of damage done to the actual area that a person has been injured in. So that's basically RISA done in the quickest possible way I could. And, um, I'd like to sum it all up saying that RISA is actually really important. I really do recommend, once again, that you read this table and you try and memorize a few things because it will come up a lot in sports medicine. Okay, thanks for watching this video and I really do hope it helped. Um, just be sure to watch my next one, which will be on the next part of this same critical question one. Thank you.